19.11. World record which has stood since 2013. Ricky Pedersen of Denmark. It's Schoenmakers in front. Lily King not giving it away. Schoenmakers, she's going to win. Does she break the world record? Yes. Yes, she, she does. does. Gold and a world record for Schoenmaker of South Africa. What a brilliant performance. Hey guys, my name is Jabbar and welcome to Jabbar's vlog. In today's episode, we'll be speaking about the Olympics, which is taking place in Tokyo, Japan. Um, and today's topic, we'll be talking about um, Tajana Schumacher. She's an uh, Olympian from South Africa. First of all, I just want to congratulate her for um, winning the first gold in the Olympics and on top of that, I just want to say uh, it's been a drought year, especially women in South Africa. It's been almost like a 20, uh, 25 years. And guess what? She's 24 years old. So at that time, we were still in memories of 1996 Atlanta, which won by Penny. The new champion was born between them. Schoenmaker is in front. King second. Lazor third. The last South African swimming gold. Atlanta 1996 when Penny Haynes won the 1 and 200 breaststroke double. Can they get a gold medal here? Schoenmaker shortening. Lily King dropping off now. This angle is deceiving. Uh, Schoenmaker, can she break the world record here? 219.11. World record which has stood since 2013. Ricky Pedersen of Denmark. It's Schoenmaker's in front. Lily King not giving it away. Showing makers, she's going to win. Does she break the world record? Yes, yes she, she does. does. Gold and a world record for showing maker of South Africa. What a brilliant performance! It took so long for South Africa to come back. Sometime because I love Olympics and I love Team South Africa, I kind of worried like, a, what's gonna happen? Is it women? In South Africa they're not interested in swimming because if you look at it um, uh, which was it 2004 where South Africa the men won the relay it was inspirational and that didn't take that, that didn't finish there the men been dominating swimming in South Africa well it's not like a swimming it's not South Africa is not the big nation when it's coming to any other nation such as it's a big country with big population but it's got less people who are interested in swimming but if you look at australia australia is a country where swimming it's so popular it's becoming like a religion there's a state called queensland it's like a center of swimming in in australia and there's a story of one athlete she was young, the parent they have to sell their house to move to interstate and to buy a new house just to let the child train. And guess what? At the moment as we're speaking, she's getting gold. So Tajana Schumacher, excuse my pronunciation, she was born in nineteen ninety six and she's twenty four years old now. Now, if we think of 24 years old, I think 24, 25 is the best age for fully grown Olympian. I mean, when you're reaching at the age of 30, yeah, it might be a little bit challenging. But hey, there are other athletes when they got 30, they're fully mature. And she was born in Johannesburg. And the reason... I mean, I just couldn't help when I saw her winning gold, beating the Americans. Trust me, America is like Australia. Swimming there, it's got a, just like in Australia, swimming got a lot of sponsors. And the more the sponsors, they are involved in sports, the more the participants you will have. In America, similarly, is a country which is fully developed and sport is a priority. It's a big thing there. Sport, it's everything. They've got a lot of channels. The more the channels, the more the sponsors. Now, when she was swimming um, during uh, the Olympics, Lily, she was in front of her. I just want to let you guys listen a little bit 
once I finish this uh, reaction at the end, you probably listen to the whole. Fortunate, I have a video, but I can't put a video. I think that would be like a violating the right. So I'm just going to put an audio for you guys to listen and relive the moment. She was so emotional. At the, first of all, she didn't even know that uh, Tajana broke the new world record. And when she realized that she won, she was so emotional. She was crying. Lily from America and the other team from America, they just came to give her a hug. It was the best moment in sports. Believe me, there, there are a lot of people in Tokyo who are winning gold, but we don't hear them. But their reaction can make her being posted all over the world. If you check, you just Google her name, you will see most newspaper all over the world. They are really talking about her. She's becoming like a topic. And I just want to add that, that it took South Africa so long. And that this is supposed to be a message to South Africa. Please go out there, support women in sport support them the competition of swimming becoming even harder and harder because the record becoming harder and harder to get talking about this record tajana um Sh tajana excuse my pronunciation again tajana schumacher just broke it has been set in 2013 since then no one even came closer to break it now we are speaking, South Africa have produced a new champion. No, she, did, she didn't just won the Olympics. She even broke the record. She cemented her name. Now, it's going to take some time for someone else to come and break it. Because I was kind of worried. The way Lily from America, the way she was going, I was like, no, is she going to win it? But I, could, I was listening to commentator. She said, if Tajana will turn on this one, then Lily, she's in trouble. And that is exactly what have happened. South Africa have produced a champion. Now, Penny, the woman who won uh, gold in, in Atlanta in USA in 1996. Personally, South African media, please get to her who want to see a reaction what is she going to say about it? I'm sure she has something positive to say about Tajana and congratulate her. I mean, the country such as South Africa, South Africa, I mean, it's half developed, half developing. It's not easy to come up with a champion of the world. When you have a lot of countries in Europe, Australia, America, even Brazil, they're investing so much money into the sport and to come up with someone who can actually beat everyone is just unbelievable so i will probably send my message to south africa or the sponsor please tajana need not just a thank you but a, a reward she need to be rewarded for a, um for her amazing performance in the olympics She's 25 years old. When you hit 30, you're slowing down. And also, um, I just want to talk about, um, first of all, I just want to congratulate her. You're an amazing athlete. Congratulations. Personally, I do support South Africa. There's such a, a country which inspires so many people around the world. Sometimes we have to look at South Africa in a positive way, saying that this is a country overcome so many challenges. And today they are united and they still have a team which can go to Olympics and won gold. I mean, if you look at the um, African countries, trust me, they don't perform well when it's coming to Olympics. They don't perform well, either in soccer or any other, any other um, sport, they don't really perform well. Um, it's always like a the big developed country which is performing so well. And we just can't wait. I think Tajana, she's just set a, an example for Team South Africa to follow. They shouldn't sit back and say, oh, we got a medal. Everyone should go out there and also make their country proud and make sure they also um, get goals. They should be inspired by that. 
because Rio, um, South Africa did so well. Unfortunately, this year, Casta Semenya, she won't be participating. So she was the hope to get gold. Unfortunately, she won't be there. But South Africa have to surprise us. Like just now, we've been surprised by Tajana. So we need more surprises like this. It's such inspirational um, for for the world at, um, at large. And I also want to talk about the Olympics opening ceremony before I just finish this one. Um, the Olympic ceremony, it was not the Olympics that we know. We know that Japan, they are so developed when it's coming to technology. I mean, if you talk about a lot of electronics, they're all coming from there. They hold all the um, headquarters, they all come from Japan. Talk about Sony, Panasonic, Lumix. Um, I mean, the list goes on. I mean, Toyota, you talk about all, I mean, Japan, I've, really contribute a lot when it's coming to electronic and technology to the world. And this is supposed to be their moment to shine. But hey, at least we got the Olympics. The opening ceremony, it was not like really like a big thing, you know. The stadium was empty. Um, the performance, uh, I'll probably rate it as five. Um, this is my point of view. Um, it was not, it was a low budget uh, opening ceremony. Um, I think I'll probably understand why, because um, you need audience, you need people to pay a ticket, you need people to travel to Japan for tourism. It's just like a, they couldn't let this Olympic just go away like that. I mean, Japan have worked so hard trying to bring all the stadium, build the stadium infrastructure. I mean, they've spent money. I mean, to be let to be told, like, you know what, sorry, it's not going to happen. I don't think, like, it's supposed to be a good message. And that's exactly why the Olympics have decided just to go ahead with it. This pandemic is really, 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 really killing all of us. Not just killing us in, in terms of productivity. So I just want to salute all the participants. I mean, it's been so challenging for you guys to even exercise. I mean... Some places they've been hit with multiple lockdowns. Um, so to come up, becoming a winner, it's it, it just an amazing. And I also want to talk about Team Russia. Um, I mean, the doping scandal um, is just really a um, sad story. I love Russia and I hope the next Olympics they will come up with a fully name. Um, and and then the national anthem will be sang. Um, it's really sad, but I, I know when the country is trying to win gold and go behind um, water, um, it's not good. But I also feel bad. No, I, I don't think like as everyone was involved in the scandal, there, there were other athletes where, where they actually, uh, they were being fearful so I can't I can't be here and speak for everyone, but I can speak for few people. Um I don't know how they went about their business, but I hope I hope um this will be the last Olympics where um the Russia has been really like downgraded. Uh, they are performing well on the medal. Um so hopefully in coming next Olympics uh, things will change. And the closing ceremony, I'm hoping that will be better. Um, and wait, before I got so much to say about the Olympics, I also want to talk about um, countries that don't really, like Olympics are becoming more expensive and even more expensive to um, host. And I think like in the future, more country will start back off from the Olympics because it's so expensive. If you go to countries such as Brazil, Brazil is kind of like a developing country. I mean, they've spent so much money um, into the Olympics. Some of this um, venue has been really abandoned. And I just want to talk about Greece. Do you remember the 2004 Olympics? It was like a masterpiece. If you look at Sydney 2000, 
cameras, it was different because the thing is that those cameras were built before the 2000. They were built early on. It was built in the 90s. So if you look at Sydney, um, quality, video quality is very low. But if you look at uh, 2004 Olympics, the quality, picture quality actually changed. Why? Because in the year 2000, things really, technology really like picks up. It was a year 2000 up. It was a year where technology have improved. But what happened to Greece after the Olympics, they've struggled. The country went bankrupt. There was so much going on in Greece. Their money lost value. It was like a... You know when the country keep printing money and the money doesn't have value anymore? It, that's exactly what's happening to, to Greece. It, it was chaotic. So I think the Olympics, they have to, um, the committee Olympics, they have to look at it and see what they can do. That's the reason why they actually awarded Los Angeles to be the host of upcoming Olympics without even choosing who or who. Because... If someone want to put his hands up and say, hey, I want to host this event and 10 people or now people don't really stand up for it. this coronavirus. It's really, really came harder on everyone to the points where so many countries have left bankrupt. No one really want to host the Olympics anymore because you spend so much money, but you're not getting enough money. But sometimes... It's just the name. If you ask me what the Olympics I remember, when I was young, I used to have a T-shirt which says Barcelona 1992. It's kind of like a memory. We all know Barcelona, the host Olympics game. So, yeah, it's going to be like a memories. At the moment, we're speaking about Sydney. Sydney, the host the Olympics. It's becoming um, another memory. And uh, I'm sure Brisbane... Um, 2032. I don't know how if we we'll make it to that year by the will of God. Um, yeah, well done to Brisbane for standing up representing Australia. Well done. We'll be coming down there to Bris to Brisbane to watch the Olympics. Um, that's all for this video. If you did like it, make sure to subscribe. Hit that uh, subscribe button. And if you want to see more of Olympics reaction. Make sure to subscribe and stay connected. Until next time, bye for now.